So next up is Chris Lyle on the GASIP Partnership Gateway. GASIP Partnership, yeah. Global Invasive Alien Species Information Partnership. It's a, a voluntary partnership. It was set up about a year ago. Uh, a number of organizations who are specialists in invasive species, in information management, in informatics, and getting things done, getting things out there. And a key part that you will see there is the Convention on Biological Diversity, we're a partnership by virtue of signing an MOC with the CBD. The organizations are all committed to open access to information. Invasive species are a huge problem worldwide. Massive problem for biodiversity, massive problem for human livelihoods. Um, Partners to the CBD have taken a number of steps policy-wise to looking at invasives, uh, the latest being one of the biodiversity targets. Um, and we've got 193 countries signatory out there who actually want to do something about invasives, and they have a huge problem. Because the people who are out there doing things, especially at the policy level, and then the implement implementation of that policy, don't necessarily have access to all the information they need about invasive species. There's a massive amount of information out there, but it's all scattered about. There are fabulous databases, fabulous tools, very, very difficult in some cases to find, especially if you're not a specialist in invasive species. That's our problem. And those people, those countries, have been asking for help through CBD COP decisions. We need more access to tools. We need more information, access to information. So that defines the problem. It defines also the users. A lot of our users are not going to be specialists, are not even going to be very good at finding things on the web. It's amazing how difficult some people find it to use Google. It's a fact. It's a reality. So the partnerships come together to start delivering information. Now, it's not just digital information. We're doing a whole range of things, uh, including apps. Um, but information is a core thing. And a year ago, we had a, an international expert workshop here in the museum. And that workshop said, right, we need a website with such and such a set of properties. And the scratch pads really fitted that bill. It fitted the bill because it had it possible potential for collaboration, for interaction, for fora, for information provision, for private areas to do research, and so on and so on. The main thing I'm just going to mention now, however, is information location. All of those bits of information, those websites out there with good stuff on, with tools on, the workshop said we need to make sure those are accessible. So we built a cat scratch pad. We, we showed it at CBD COP uh, in October in Hyderabad. Um, with content, well, websites organized by content. Mm -hmm. Pretty useful. People were very impressed. Earlier this year, we had another expert workshop here. And we went through use cases. What are the questions people are asking? What's the information? How do they use the scratch pad, the, the, the gateway, to find that information? Does it work? It does if you know where the information is to start with, the curse of too much knowledge. So we then realized what we had to do was to build something a little more complex and think of the workflows to understand where the information is actually going to be needed. And that's what we've been doing since. And again, with the age of the Scratchpad team, particularly Catherine, we've been reworking those websites. We've now got about 600 websites and resources ready to be tipped into the Scratchpad um, to follow the workflow. And we're just writing that workflow at the moment so that people will be able to access the right resource at the right point in the workflow. We also use the species list. This is automatically looking up IUCN, EOL. As I said earlier, the partners have got a massive amount of information. We need to be able to access that better. So the next step is to actually build a registry so we can start accessing the data within the databases of our partners in a much more structured way. And again, better work with the workflows of the, of the users. This is something which GBIF and NHM are collaborating on in particular. We're hoping to build in grant or seek funding later this year, early next year. That's part of the next development. Another thing we're going to have to do is to make sure that the users can actually use it. So later this year, I'll be in CBD Substa, which is the scientific technical part, working with users, as we did in COP last year, setting them tests, 
seeing if the scratch pad actually delivers against their need. So what we're doing at this is we've identified a very broad, policy-relevant, global area of work, and we're using the system to try and meet the needs of that area. Great. Thanks, Chris.